Let's talk about ICM, or the independent chip model. At its most basic level, it means that chip values decrease as your stack size increases. So each additional chip you win in a tournament is worth less and less as your stack size is growing. And it only applies to tournaments and sit and goes, not to cash games at all. So what does this mean? What does this, how does this apply to your game? Well, it means two big things, and you probably haven't heard them termed quite this way. We're going to try to make it as simple for you as possible. Number one, ICM means big stacks. We'll call it bigs should bully short stacks. And what do we mean by bullying? We mean putting pressure on the short stacks to have to call a big portion of their stack. We don't mean calling shoves from short stacks because you can't bully once they've already made their decision. But because of ICM, it's mathematically, not just psychologically appropriate, but mathematically appropriate to put pressure on short stacks because they, they have to call tighter because their chips are worth so much more than the chip you're risking to knock them out. Secondly, it means, and you might have started, we might have hinted at this a bit, but because of ICM, it means you should call tighter on bubbles. And there's multiple bubbles in a tournament. Of course, there's the first money bubble the brink of not cashing and cashing, but there's a final table bubble. In the case of sit and goes, the money bubble's gigantic. Maybe it's like a, a 27 man sit and go and only the top five place. So if there's say six or seven people left, that's a gigantic bubble. Because of ICM, you actually should tighten your calling range when you're around the bubble. And this is because even when you have positive chip EV, so say you have like a 75% chance to win the hand, you might, based on the prize structure and chip stacks at the table, you might have minus negative monetary EV. Your expected prize gained in the tournament from making a call around the bubble might be lower than if you fold. All right, so ICM means your chip values are worth less and less. Each marginal chip is worth less and less as your stack grows. You should bully short stacks when you're when you're fortunate enough to be a big stack around bubbles. And you should call tighter on bubbles, regardless of your chip stack. So let's prove that out, though. That sounds a little far-fetched. Let's look at an example. We're going to take some results from an ICM calculator online. The link to that calculator is in the description of this video, so check it out. Don't take our word for these numbers. They're based off some quite complex math, the derivation of which we can't explain in a 10 minute video, but again, there's another link to the derivation article, which is actually quite good if you're at all interested. So let's get started with the hand example. Let's say there's four players left in a sit and go. It's a pretty standard sit and go. The first, second, and third spots get paid. And let's say that these spots pay $50, $30, and $20. And fourth place gets nothing. Player one has 2,500 chips. So let's say this is chips up here. Player two has 2,500. What do you know? We all have 2,500 chips. And when you use an ICM calculator, you put everyone's chip stacks in. And then across the top, you put the price for each place. And then the ICM tells you some percentage of the time that each player is going to get each place. We're not going to write these in, but the lesson here in our first example is that everybody, since we have equivalent share of the total chips in play, we all get an equivalent share of the prize pool. And that equates, since the prize pool is $100, we're each getting $25, one fourth of that prize pool. So ICM doesn't seem that magical right now, but let's say that player four. He shoves small blind, and we're in the big blind. We're player one. We have a 60% chance of winning this hand. Don't worry too much how we figured that out. Let's say we have a lot of history with him. We know his shoving range. We have something like, I don't know, king, queen suited. We just figure we're 60% against his range. Should we call? Now, if you didn't know what ICM is, you'd say, absolutely. Why not call? 
were a favorite. Pretty big, actually. That's a good edge if you're a sit-and-go pro. You're playing thousands of these. So let's work out the chip EV. This is something you're probably already comfortable with. So 40% of the time you're going to lose, you're going to bust. You're going to have zero chips. So 0 times 0.4, but then 60% of the time you're going to double up. So you'll have 5k. And you multiply this expression out, and the result is 3,000 chips. So we make 500 chips in the long run when we call with 60% equity in the hand. But how about our prize equity? Remember, the prizes are not equally distributed. They're top heavy, and fourth place gets no money at all. See, hopefully you're thinking, well, that has to have some impact on whether we want to make marginal chip EV calls, and it absolutely does. Let's look at the monetary EV of making this call. So 40% of the time we're going to bust. We're not going to get any prize at all. So that's easy. We get 0 times 40%. How about the 60% of the time we double up to 5,000 chips? What does that mean for our prize equity, our monetary expected value? Well, you plug in the new chip stacks to the ICM calculator. Link below in the description again, but we'll do it for you right here. Player 4 is out. We have 5K. What does that do to our monetary value where there's $25 that needs to be allocated to the remaining three players? And you might think, well, our first 2,500 chips were worth $25, so don't we just have $50 in tournament equity now? But no, no, we don't. Remember, ICM tells us the additional 2,500 in chips is worth less than the original 2,500 to the tune of several dollars. So instead of $50, we actually end up with $38 and 33 cents. So of course we make a little bit of money. We have $13 and 33 cents extra, but what happened to the other 11 bucks? Well, it gets distributed between player two and four. They actually end up each with $30 and 83 cents. So let's go back to our monetary expected value expression. Our chip stack when we win will be $38.33, and that's going to happen 60% of the time. So our MEV in the long run is $23. That's $2 less than if we just fold. So notice, folding is actually making us $2 in this situation. When the small blind shoves, even though we have 60% chip EV, folding makes us money. And calling such a gigantic mistake, not only do we lose $2, but notice $5.83 of our equity goes to player 2 and player 3 that weren't even involved in the hand. Now, this is a lot of math to do in the middle of a tournament, in the middle of a sit-and-go if you're playing online, and it's basically impossible to do if you're playing live. So how do you use ICM? How do you apply it to your game? Basically, I think you should play... A lot of sit and goes. And when you get into a difficult spot, basically a marginal chip EV situation, you have 55, 60, even 65% chip EV, and you're not sure if you should call, just bookmark that hand. Look at it later after your session. Pull up the ICM calculator, the link below in the description. Plug in the, the chip stacks in the prize pool and just see if it was positive MEV if your prize expectation was going up. And that way, you do that enough times, you'll build an intuition of what spots that are marginal chip EV are actually negative monetary EV. And you can play the game that way.